Not much else to celebrate in these trying times for the British Empire. Well done, ship of the line. Now please don't get blown up. Barbarian riflemen. One never thought one would see the day. And yet, there it is. Oh, crossbowmen. If only you knew how futile that truly was. With the outlines of the neighboring continent being measured to a greater and greater degree every day. Oh, it's from Sydney. Okay. It seemed only logical that, eventually, there would come a time when such things must be explored more thoroughly than they could have been in the past. Another ship of the line was produced by upgrading an existing trireme, which seems like an impossible feat if you think about it for more than five seconds. But let's not think about it for any more than five seconds, shall we not? Good. We'll just move right on along and pretend that it makes sense. The British Empire was finally co uh, connected in terms of its cultural borders at the least, which was an exciting thing to see in 1595 in the middle of the Renaissance. Six turns left in the Golden Age, Queen Elizabeth knew that she had to make the most of it all. And she would do that by continuing her strategy of entrenching her position, ignoring Alexander's ridiculous requests, I don't want to get anywhere. You're welcome to bring it, Alexander. You know you are. No one cares. Speaking of diplomacy, it seems as if many of the people or countries in the world have disappeared. Now, let's see. What do they have to offer? Horses and ivory? Oh, thank you. Horses and wine. No, oh, thank you. Silver. No, mm. oh, thank you. Sydney. Silver. Silver. Gems and horses. Nobody wants those. Horse or ivory. Nah. It seems as if the Aztec Empire has disappeared. But really, that's not that much of a surprise. Their city was raised by the Greek troops, coming in from Halicarnassus, no doubt. And that's simply the way that history goes. It was only a matter of time now until Alexander took to those seas and to the land and attempted to defeat the British Empire once and for all. A future where both empires existed peacefully side by side on the same continent seemed all but impossible.
Yes, the world is round. It was a shocking discovery to the people of the Greek Empire, who believed that the world was a fat, flat plain with Athens at its center. It was also a shock to the people of the British Empire, who believed that the world was a flat plain with London at its center. And it was a shock to the people of the Aztec Empire, who believed that the world was a flat plain with Tenochtitlan at its center. Everyone was so shocked to find that their world was in fact round with no specific center. So shocked, in fact, that many of them refused to believe it and simply thought that when you reached one side of the map over here, God picked you up and put you back on the other side just to make sure that you didn't fall off. Here we can see the ruins of a city, once proud, now completely decimated and destroyed for all time. Oh, go there. Almeida has declared war on me, really. No big surprise there. Alexander was always adept at manipulating city-states into doing his bidding. And with things being as they were in the world, it seemed only appropriate that the number of city-states available would all become Greece's vassals in time. You can do it. There you go. You can brace all you want, but we're shooting giant cannonballs at you. These balls are shooting the size of your head. Yeah, your head that you don't have anymore because you're dead. Sorry about that. Eh, not really. Nah, not really at all. Okay, Golden Age had come to an end, but that did not mean that the fun was going to stop in England. No, not at all. Other than the fun stopping, it would simply start again in a new way. A new way that may not have seemed fun, but was, in fact, required fun. Many trade agreements came to an end with Darius in 1630, as well as with Kamehameha. But that did not necessarily mean that they had to remain over. Sounds good to me, Lord Kamehameha. How about you, Darius? You like whales? Yeah, you like whales. You love whales. You love whales. Don't even pretend you don't. Alexander, of course, being a dick. That's his fault. He just really wanted to take over this continent. began constructing a national treasury as well. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Whether or not it actually was, well, that's something for another lecture. For now, suffice it to say that Halicarnassus, total BS.
At least they were only able to do one damage to a ship of the line. But in return, a ship of the line was only able to do one damage to them. And this would continue for some time. The disadvantage being, of course, that eventually the ship of the line would run out of health and the city would simply continue to regenerate. Frustrating? Certainly. Realistic? Perhaps. And that's what we strive for in our simulations. <laughs> well, Dave, I simply changed the conditions for victory. If you can't win under the current conditions, change them. I've changed my conditions to victory to having three ships of the line at once. And would you look at that? I do. I declare this a victory for the great nation of Britannia, for the British Empire, and a resounding defeat for the massive, sprawling Greek Empire and its many, many city-states. You don't have any ships of the line at all, whereas we have three. Take that. Next time, class, we will see where the British Empire goes next. And perhaps we will watch their ultimate destruction, or perhaps we will watch their ultimate redemption. Only time will tell. And remember to do your homework on page 152 of your textbooks, answering the question, If the British Empire fell, then how did we ever get Mr. Bean? Thank you for contributing to Extra Life, and thank you for watching my 24-hour live stream. I appreciate your support ever so much. Extra Life raised over a million dollars to help sick, dying children become more comfortable in hospitals. Uh, I managed to raise over $1,200, largely thanks to you. And really, we couldn't have done this without you. And once again, we have proven that the spirit of gamers is the spirit of generosity. I hope to see you again soon, either on my YouTube channel or the next time I have the time to do a live stream. Not a 24-hour one anyway, at least not until next year. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And goodbye. <laughs>